God's word, faithfully preached, is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives, delivering them from the shackles of sin, the flesh, and the world, and transforming them into useful vessels through whom Jesus can pour out his blessings. Living Seed invites you to a feast of the truth as God's servant brings to us the word of life. Precious Father, we thank you very much for this evening. You never make mistakes. You have gathered us here today because you intend to do something with our lives. And even though we will have loved for the whole things we have approved, we know that you are mindful of those of us who are seated. Therefore, Father, I ask that you will send your word to us, particularly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be mindful of us, be mindful of our future. Speak because of where we are going to be in the next few years. Speak because of what your intentions for us lies in the future. We ask it in the name of Jesus. And nevertheless, you know where we are now. Father, speak to us. Explain to us in the language you understand. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. Pray that as I speak, uh, each one of us will have a clear understanding of what you are saying. Thank you once again. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me begin by reading a passage of scripture with you. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. And I am going to read verses 12 to verse 14. First John chapter 2. Verse 12 to 14. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Are you with me? Are you with me? All right. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known me that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overturned the biggest now. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Verse 14. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known me, that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God are families in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Praise the Lord. From that passage, you will, you will see quickly that the writer describes or divides the faces of a man's life into three. Can you see from that passage? Who are the three people he was addressing in that place? Eh? I'm not here yet. Children, young men, or who? That comes to the plan. If you don't die young, you will start as a child, you will become a young man or a young woman, and then you will end up your life either as a father or a mother, depending on your gender. Is that, is that easy to see? But you know, as we're looking at this passage, I saw different messages spoken to the three different segments of life. And this is where we got the caption of battle for the young. I thought I should begin from there. So that you will know what we mean by a battle for the young. Why do we say that the young man is living in a battle? 
First, you begin your life as a child protected. If a small child were in this place, no matter how busy they are, everybody's corner of the eyes will be on the child. If the child wants to fall, how many people will stretch their hands? Eh? Almost everybody around there. That's the life of the child. Protected, paid for. That child doesn't need to struggle to know what he's going to eat. When he's hungry, he just say, Mommy, I'm hungry. A food will survive, uh, surface. That small child is fed, is protected, is provided for, is guided. Decisions are made for that child. That child does not have to worry about what will I take my bath in the morning? Should I go and sleep or should I go and play? All those decisions are taken for, for a child by parents, by elders, by people around. That's the life of a child. How many of you have been children before? Let me see your hand. We are all children visiting. Even the clothes you wore was bought for you by your parents. Am I correct? Even the one you wear on each day, when you want to make decisions, only just went to the wardrobe and decided whichever one of his child, and her child, is going to wear today and brings the child and said, Hey, you want to Come here. We want to sit up on my leg. And he puts the gun over your head, tied his car, puts the car, do whatever she likes. Put a flower there, put something purple and green. Did you go to me? Just finished and you went out. You were a display of your mother's intentions. Am I correct? Your money and daddy. Everything took decisions for you. You did not take any decision for yourself. That's the life of a child. And dreams to become a young man. The other sometimes starts saying, I'm ah, not a child. Supposing on your first day in school, in OM, just cast your mind back to three, on, three years ago, when you were 100, four years, five years ago, depending on your level. Supposing on the first day of class, as you were all sitting down in the class, Somebody, man, get to your one of your classmates. Say, Good morning, everybody. Everybody looks at that. Say, Good morning. Say, You see, I'm a child. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. When you do something wrong with me, I think it's a child. I don't know what it's like. Okay. Oh, supposing on the other hand, let me jump the young man stage. After some time, you become a new man. I'm not yet an old man. Am I? You know, I'm only an elderly man. Is there a difference between the two? Yes, I'm not a good man. What do you have your first day class? One getting old man stands up and says, Hello, hello, everybody in this class. My, my last birthday is 73. My grandchildren are in second issue. I just want to be a doctor. You are a classmate. Who would like to be my roommate? I don't know who would like to be my roommate. I don't know who would like to be my roommate. In class, he had a classic name. What is his name? Grandpa Felix. But you see, the age of being a child and being a father. A grandfather is the age of being a young man. 
Because there are no children here, I will leave the children in the I've spoken enough about them, isn't it? And because there are no fathers, except for maybe some of these people, they are not, they are not old men yet, so, so I can I can push them aside. I want to concentrate on what brings to the young man. Can you go back to the Bible with me? You see, verse 13, it says, I like unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Then he said, I like unto you young men and young women by extension. Because you are what? You have become the wicked one. I like unto you little children because you have known the father. Then he goes to verse 14 again. He said, I have written unto you, father, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Because you are what? You are strong. The word of God abides in you, and you have what? Overcome the wicked one. Now, whereas the language of speaking to children is the language of uh, you know the father, you know, you know parent, the language of the small child, the child, everything that has to do with children, with your father, and your daddy's pet, your daddy's mommy's pet, and all of that. And when you go to old men, you say, hmm, you are new from the beginning. You start talking about the experience. Am I correct? But when it comes to the young man, the language that I'm hearing Brother Paul talk about there is the language of battle. Can you see it? You are strong and you are what? Overcome. When do you overcome? Where do you overcome? In battle. So the life of every young man is a battle. You are already at war. The unfortunate thing is that many of us are not aware. We don't realize. And as such, many young people live their, their lives as if they are civilians on the battleground. Just imagine that somebody has gone to war. There are bullets fighting everywhere. People are cocking their guns and hiding to shoot. Interballistic missiles are back line. And then somebody wears a brother. No, 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 no. Okay. It's the man that wears a brother. Let me see that young lady. They are those that she's wearing her. And she's catwalking. Where? On the battlefront. Where bullets are flying. What is she planning to make herself? Eh? A cheap target? A cheap casual? Unfortunately, many young people go through life oblivious of the battle that is raging over their lives. They take everything at face value. You know that nobody writes battleground on the wall when you go to the war. Do they write it? No, it's normal. Don't forget that thing. If the if war should break forth in the now, and they start shooting all the non-indigenous. So people are saying, hey, no. How do you like to behave? You, your tongue is feeling like somebody who just came from the UK. You normally do your holidays in party. And once in a while, you go to the party to do And uh, that's why you live your life. They are not the boomer. They are not the boomer shop here. How do they know the boomer shop here? Go on, I'll see the same part. Go on, I'll see more. Oh, this morning, I'm looking very funny. So come back. When you start talking, they do that this one is what? They do not show them. But when you bring your your politics, even the way you walk, said already shows that you are not from here. And there is a battle in town. They then kill, shoot outside all non-indigenous. How are you likely to walk if you are glad to go to that? How do you walk? You cannot see me now. Will you put that in there? 
You put a big sense in that. Is that why you go? You will gather yourself. In fact, you will look for. You want to go back to where? You look for one of those purple, purple scarves that I see all over the place. You wear purple on top of green. And tie the thing like this so that people will think that's because you are aware. But supposing there's somebody who did not know there was a woman going on, she arrives in the town, straight in her students, and everything. And then uh, she's wearing her spaghetti, and she's walking and she's doing herself in the street. That's an open invitation to disaster. Am I correct? He's simply saying, here am I, shoot me. Unfortunately, for many of us that are going through life, as young people, we are not aware that we are in a raging battle. Life is not fair to the young man. Listen to me, I've been a young man before. Life is not fair to you at all. Do you know why? When you were a small child, everybody ran it down to protect you. Everybody wanted to defend you. Why? Because they know you are vulnerable, you are young, you are immature, you are inexperienced, you don't have wisdom, you don't know your left or your right. Everybody says, it's a small child, not doing anything. Please help me. If you want to cross the road like this, and you see a small child approach the street, 200 elders will run for that child to ensure that she crosses the street safely. But when they see a teenager, appear on his own, and she wants to cross the road. How many people help you to cross? 24, 25. And you stand back to the roadside, you want to cross. You know the truth. If you need to try to help you, you will not have it. Am I going to We got it. You don't know what happened to me after I got married. In fact, I gave it back to my first child. And I went home to go and visit my father, my mother. So when I finished, my car was parked on the other side of the road. So my mother was seeing me off to my car. So we needed to cross the road. You know what happened? My mother held my hand. So I was wondering, what does she want to do? She wants to cross. She said, break Wait, what will respond to you? I do that. You see, are you the one that has been helping me to cross the road everywhere? You know, that's the young man. He doesn't accept her. Because he thinks he knows. Because he thinks he's already a mature person. Because she thinks that she can do, she knows what to do. She knows what to do by herself. Don't hold my hand. To you. If anybody came to the side of the road to try and help a teenager to cross the street, the speaker will look and say, Thank you very much. I can cross the road by myself. Imagine it's a six year old girl. You are going to church. She's fully dressed. And you carry her, you want to back her. How long will she agree for you to back her? Before you walk, it is like saying, let me walk on myself. By that time, she's aware she's pretty. By that time, she wants to show up her new dress to her friends. By that time, she's beginning to have thoughts of herself. She's beginning to think that I am older than that. I'm not a small child. I've, I've, I've seen arguments between mother and child. The child is seven years old. She said, do you think I'm a child? The mother says, what are you? He said, I'm not a child to me. You are not, I'm not like an employee to me. You know, I'm sitting at the screen here. How is a child? Me, yeah, I'm not a child. That's the problem with the young man. As soon as you are entering food and young adulthood, you begin to take responsibility by yourself. You want to face life by yourself. You want to make your decisions by yourself. You want to make your choices by yourself. 
People are looking at you. They can see that you are making the wrong choice. If they are trying to help you, what are you likely to say? Don't worry, baby. I know my, I know what I'm doing by myself. It's a parental problem I handle all the time between parents and their teenage or young adult children. The crisis is always she, she treats me as if I'm a child. She talks to me, he talks to me as if I'm still a small boy. You don't be shouting at small boy. You don't be shouting at small boy. That was what I had my children saying about me one day. And I, one of them had done something and I disciplined him. And I was, why are you doing this? Don't you know that that is wrong? Tell me when I finish. And I went upstairs. Incidentally, I came back downstairs immediately. And I was passing by their room. They went to their floor room. You know what I call floor room? They were discussing. They said, what did you do? Hey, what happened between you and that? You got the, the whole house is uh, on fire like that. You know what I'm saying? Don't mind that. Uh, my dear, you don't shout in somebody. Don't shout in. You don't be shouting on somebody. So I said, so everything I said is about to work. Shout in. Everything I said, I was just shouting on somebody. And I was not shouting on you. What do you want to type on on somebody? So every instruction that I thought I was passing across. That instruction was for who? Somebody. Every connection, everything I was saying, that I thought I was telling my child how to do something good. She had. And that's the life of the young That's the life of the young adult. When it's time to start becoming aware of your own success, and you start. You know, uh, the normal things, and your mother says, uh, chin, 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 uh, yeah. chin, uh, yeah. mm. I don't know what you are doing. And I know what. He said, Mommy, wait, 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 Say, mommy, that's your time. That's your time. That goes school. That time. That time. Mommy, don't worry. This and all like that. That's all, all mentality of things we say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will not accept help. You will not accept instruction. Something tells you you are already what? Yes, you are not because you are a young and a young, inexperienced adult. And for the most part, you are an adult who is not aware of the battle that is raging over your head. Most of the time, you are, you are thinking that the person you are dealing with, the people you are dealing with, are just your friends. In your mind, my colleagues, my friends, my parties, those that were in the same class together, those that were in the same school together, those that we went to same technology school together, that we are still connected. Oh, my Facebook friends, uh, my social media contacts. In your mind, that's all you think you are dealing with. But if what Brother Paul said in that first lecture chapter two is correct, who are you dealing with? Look at the Bible. Who are you dealing with? <laughs> There's an invisible enemy that is fighting you. He doesn't show his face. Many, many times he acts through trying faces. Many, many times you relate with the wicked one. Even though you think you are relating with friends and colleagues and classmates, you don't know that the person that you are reading living your life and trying to overcome. Oh, I wish I had time to talk to you about old age. I am not yet an old man. I insist. <laughs> I'm not yet an old man. Because an old man is a man who is no longer thinking, who is no longer thinking, who is no longer I'm, I'm not like that. I want to talk that I still have visions to pursue. 
Ali Ali, who is a typical old man, that man that sits in front of me. What did he say? Eh? Hey. I didn't hear. Yeah, you can old man, the that man that sits in front of me, back only. You live in there where you are going to work in the morning. Where you are coming back, where you meet him in the same spot. He's counting the cars that are passing. Oh, yeah, that boy. And he's talking to you. And when the person, if you have the mistake of sitting to talk with that old man, how long are you going to spend there? One hour. He said, in 1975, mm, you know you are very tired. I know when I go to visit my father, my father is still alive. So I cannot be at the only one. My father is over 90. If I don't have a minimum of two hours, I don't go and visit him. Because when you say you want to go, say, hey, I, I, you know that thing I said I was going to tell you. Then I said, that means, go and go take it. You say, hey, sit down now, where are you going? And that's how we'll be talking. We'll be talking two hours minimum. That's an old man. Old men are always reminiscing. Is that correct English? Reminiscing. I remember when I wanted to join UPSC in 1962. That time, the general manager was Mr. Shikoku I remember that interview. Mm. If I had known, I would have worn my suit that day. It was the bad that I wore that made me to lose that job. A, an old man is always thinking back. An old man is always, they don't look forward because there's no forward for them. They have reached the terminal points of their life. They're always thinking back. They're always looking back. They're always explaining things in perspective from the back. You are not like that. For you, your life is, is, is ahead. Your future is ahead. You are thinking of the context. I can do this. When I finish this course now, I am going to set up my building. I am going to do this. I am going to do travel as well. I am going to be a, in fact, I am going to be a, 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 a brain surgeon. We must stop until I become things like this. I am not that. You are always thinking forward. You are always thinking ahead. I wish life was as easy as that. I know you don't like listening to old men, but if you have an old man in your house, don't worry, don't devote one weekend. And tell yourself, this one weekend, I want to keep it in your heart. Clear your children. I'm going to say, I can't be talk to me. What happened to you? When you wanted to get a job. In the man we are just to say the seat before it is out because we hear stories and those stories sometimes are very useful. You hear the story of a man who was not aware of the battle so now is there. You hear stories of men that became casualties. You they will show you the junctions of their life where they fell. Some of them will tell you the stories of how they married their first wife and that woman nearly killed them. I think it is all the same thing. I think they will go to all of these men, they will see my, my daughter. All these white my face looking boys, they have plenty of money in their pocket. Plenty of money in their pocket is not equal to plenty of love in their hearts. You will be yearning to those of Am I correct? If you have time, go and listen. The trouble is that many young people don't know that there is a battle raging over their head. And as you are looking at me, this afternoon, I'm really wondering 
I want to ask you, are you, are you aware of the states in orders that are arranged in this Are you aware of things you must overcome in order for you to become a successful person in your life? The odds are high. Are you aware of battles you must fight and win? If you are going to be well in the near future, for the most part, most young people are completely unaware. I was not aware myself in my young age, my early ages. I thought life was just to enjoy. Also, Pounce and on. Wear nice clothes. Show up with your friends. Be the envy of all the girls around. And all of them are wishing to be your best friend. And then you are the most eligible bachelor in town. That's what we used to say those days. I knew that that's not your language. You just, you are moving around. You don't know that you want to show yourself. Like a flower, the more you attract enemies of your future. There are insects that are only interested in perching on you and sucking your nectar. And when they have sucked you dry, what do they do? They look for the next available flower. If I don't get anything across to you this evening, there's something I want to go home today. The odds against me, yeah, the odds against my future, they are high. Things are not on the surface. I wish somebody had spoken like this to me in my younger age. I want to thank God that I made, I made my own decisions, my own correct, the most important decision in my life. I still read it as a teenager. I can look back now. Whereas some of my mates, they look back. They talk about stories and casualties. Me, I can look back now. And I can thank God that I can give my life to Christ early. I was just 19. I was about to cross out of teenage life. When God arrested me, I want to tell you, if, if I had not given my life to Christ, before I entered the university, you will never have heard of me. Can I show you? I will have, I will have died of that. I, I never. The kind of things that were happening inside of me, and I remember wanting to live my life. The way I was trying to go to live my life as a teenager. How did it perfect the art of living without getting drunk? Thank God in my time. Let's give me time. What were the vices that we can get into that time? Is it more than drinking than smoking? There was no paraga. Eh? There were no hard drugs. Cocaine was the only one. There was even no cocaine that can use marijuana. Even marijuana, it is only the very rich. And very, very wayward boys and girls that hold me back. So, if you didn't say we are going to, what are we talking about? Smoking, drinking, carrying around girls. And many times you carry around girls, you are not doing anything together. <laughs> for your time, I'm sorry for you. My children have begged me that I should stop saying this thing, but I don't know how to stop. Many times I look at my children and say, my, my sons, I say, I'm sorry for you. Your time is difficult. The odds stacked against you are too If you escape and become a responsible member of society and you have a correct home and you are properly married and you are proper children and your, your home becomes an exemplary home for others to envy. 
to hear it from God. Let me show you say, go to our home, they are really good for another. It's a miracle, yes. A nine-year-old girl already knows what her mother did not know when she was giving birth to her first child. There are photographic signs that can teach, teach you anything. One mother was in the same house with a nine-year-old girl. The girl does not have friends. The mother is the only one that has an android. Of course, she's a rich mother. She has one of those super phones. And it's only herself and her daughter that were in the house for this length of time. Then one day she carried her phone. And she wanted to browse on blog to find the information that she's going to use in her office. And suddenly she saw pornographic sites on my phone. What's happening? When she wants to treat this one, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Once you are visiting a site frequently, you know they will be suggesting to you some suggestions. But every time she opens YouTube, <laughs> like this. So she said, somebody must have used my phone to do something. I'm not to. Is it this lover that I came to visit the other time? Is it this person that did? Then finally she called the daughter. Are you did you kind of I said I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything. I just uh, I was just looking at the photograph in your when they beat the girl very well, she confessed. She had been watching photography. Who taught her? Let's look at the story of the life. Because I remember the time is wrong. Look at the life. Let's look at the man you will have heard of the story of a man called Joseph. Do you remember Joseph? I basically have been to Sunday school. Those of you that are not in Sunday school, that didn't go to Sunday school. Genesis chapter 37. Genesis 37. Are you there? Wrong, wrong. Let me read a few verses before we start telling the story. I want you to see the story, the life of a young man, and the odds that a young man has to overcome in order to become something in life. When I look at Joseph as a man, I will look at the girl also in the Bible. I will look at this as a boy, then I will look at another story as a girl, so that you will see that it's more or less the same thing. Verse 2 of uh, Genesis 37. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph being how many years old? 17. So this is somebody who is uh, not too far from us. I know that there are some of you that are not too far from 17. Some of you are older. You are in your early 20s. You are not too far. You can relate with this guy. He was feeding his stuff with his brethren. And the lad was with the source of Bilha, with the source of Zilpa. His father's uh, wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his own age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, what did they do? And could not speak in the same way of the game. Look at that side. And Joseph dreamed a dream. I'm reading the text, no more. And he told his brethren. And he hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed for behold, we were binding sheep in the field. And lo, my sheep are rose and swim upright. And behold, your sheep swim round about it. And made round a day with my sheep. And his brethren said to him, what, what are you talking about? Shall thou indeed reign over us? Shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they let him the get the more for his dreams and for his word. For that is coming from doing another dream. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, 
I have given you a few more. And you hold the sun and the moon and the devil stars were bound down to me. He told his father and his brethren, and his father said, Keep quiet. Unfortunately for Joseph, by this time, his mother was dead. Did you know his mother was dead? His mother died when? When he was giving back to his junior brother, then he died. You know, may God help you if you don't have a mother to talk to. If it was her mother that she spoke to, what would the mother have done? The mother would say, shh, eh? this kind of dream. My son, may God make the dream come to pass in Jesus. Mothers have capacity to obey the dream. And you hear it? Mothers don't mind if their children are better than themselves. But your friends, they mind. Your colleagues, what do I say? They mind. They don't want you to be better than them. In fact, not every father is capable of not turning a young dream to maturity. Look at one good thing about young people. They have dreams. Don't let me use the word dream. Let me use the more appropriate word. What is it? Visions. They have insights into the future. They, can, they are capable of painting a picture for their future while still in their today. When you meet a young man or a young woman who doesn't have any plan for his or her life in the future, Abba is a very terrible child. It's even a problem for the parents. In those days, when we were in school, we had a special name for them. We used to call them NFAs. You remember? What do you call your home now? What do you call them? No have name for social. You call them no future ambition. Since so in the NFA, you don't get anywhere to go. And they are there in every class. Their highest ambition is to get money to buy, to buy what to eat. Maybe Suya and drink. That's all. If they have money and they can buy a trouser, that's all. They have no dream for the future. But look at Joseph rising up in life. When he was a small boy, his father loved him and protected him. You remember I told you, every child is normally protected. When his senior brothers go out to and feed the floor, where does the father tell him to say, say stay in the house? Stay in the house. Don't let them do something to you. But they are taking time. When the father could not protect the young boy, let's see what happened. His senior brothers went out, uh, verse 12. Are you with me? And his brethren went to feed their father's floor in Shechem. And Isaac said unto Joseph, Do you know that brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come and we send you unto them. And he said to me, That I want. And he said, Go and pray me. See whether I be well with thy brethren. And well with the flock. And bring me to the gate. So he sent him out of the veil of evil. You know, when they say the veil of evil, that was the seat of the patriarch. That's where the father came. Hebron is the place where they buried Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's where the 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 it's like the the, the generational compound that provided comfort and protection for this young life with a vision. This young man that has something and somewhere to go with his life, they continue the faith, and it is true. If your parents have their way, you will do your reverse inside their house. Am I correct? If they have their way, you will do properly secondary, university, you will do masters and PhD in their bedroom. Why? Because they are afraid for your future. Several of you, your parents, I see how your parents drove you. They carry you in their car, they didn't allow you to come by public transport. 
the day you were, you know, resuming, they came, they, they helped you, they went to the hostel, they were able helping you to arrange their, your honor. Continue to go away, you can't be me. It's okay, thank you, I've been arranged by myself. Say, no, don't you know what they are telling you without this thing? I can help you to arrange your motor so that your food will not be scattered. Say, I'm not a small child. You go to yourself, thank God. After today, we will do what? We will go. We will go and leave me again. That's a child. But there came a time. No matter how much you love a child, you have to release the child from the day. And you see, your parents have started releasing. Even though know, this is still a guy that release, I mean, they release you small. They come and carry you out. <laughs> they release you small. They come and any small thing they have before. Hello, Tony. Did you get your tiny car? Hey, Tony. Hello, Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. I told you to be taking vitamin C every Sunday. Did you take it? I know now, you father now. I see more, I see my wife dealing with my boys. And I think more oh, these boys are doing no longer children. This boy is already 22. Leave this boy in the room. Let him leave his side. Say, but she I should not, I should not tell him to do the correct thing. They say leave him in the room. You better to do the correct thing. Eventually, they will release you. That's how they kept him in Moses. You remember when they came back to Moses? That's how they kept him. Until after three months, the boys crying could not no longer be. They had to throw him in the river. There's only the time when we have to take our hands off him for three months. Those guys had been keeping this boy, keeping him at home. But they what they said. Is all enough, and you know how to handle yourself. Come and see your brethren. Now, and you know, this is what I want to point out to him. In the eyes of his parents, those other, they are not 11 now, 10 brothers. What are they to Joseph? Yes. Brethren, brothers. But in reality, what are they? Enemies, hateful enemies. That's why I'm telling you that. See, your life is not at the surface. All those people that are smiling at you, they are not necessarily friends. They may carry the tag of colleague, postmates, friends, acquaintance, Facebook friends, but they are not friends. There's something else beyond. There's a vision about your future that the enemy. Of your soul can see and is going to be for any available person with which to quench that your rising star. This is what we mean by the battle for the Lord. The life of the youth is a battle. It's, it's, it's battle. Every time I look at my at my life, I think back. I insist that I'm not an old man. But you see, I'm already old enough to start looking back. I think at junctions that will have destroyed my future. I look at near escapes. When I remember sometimes my body will shake. Ah, supposing I did not survive that experience. Don't be the man of God I am today. I don't have a certain goal that I have today. I will not, I will not, I will not have been thinking. Something keeps telling me, we call this day moment. We get that How do you say that in English? You escaped. Eh? You escaped. You escaped. I escaped. May you escape in the name of Jesus. Do you know what I'm talking about? Me that I already know that I'm going to support. It was at age 20 that I committed my, my life to be the gospel. It was 20 years of age. We went to a district like this. 
I'm, I'm, when I heard the word of God, I heard the message. I stood up and went to the. I actually went to the back of the altar. At the back of the altar was a street. I still remember the trees everywhere. It was a secluded spot. I put my hands on the back of the altar. I said, Lord, if there's a way you can use this small, you said, I hope you know, in every class I was the shortest boy. Every class. There was only one class when I found somebody that I used half an inch to be taller than. And I was very excited. I said, You can use this short, nominated, thick. I was serving with my life. I will break the gospel with my life. I was just 20 years of age. And if you know the bad things that have gone on my head, I'll tell you only one thing. Every time I remember, I wonder how I escaped. I was very well, born again, you with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, this, this. I graduated from the university and I went on NYC and I met sisters. <laughs> what did I say I met? <laughs> sisters. We in fellowship together. We are brother and sister. We are brother and sister. And I made this particularly very friendly sister. No. When I saw the affinity that was developing between the two, I said, wait. Let's let's define let's let's, let's talk. He said, ah, what do you mean by like that? I said, I hear you say yes. I read that somebody has said like I said, ah, please go. So I asked. I did not know. Let me call this really short because I want to talk about it. Okay. I know it's story you like to hear that. <laughs> Before I knew what was happening, she had broken up with the person she wanted to have. Because she has found this. You see, let me tell you, let me tell you. Listen, listen. The brighter your future, the easier it is for the enemy to locate you. The higher the price star on your head. She has seen this man up, and by all means, she will go. Man, Some people will even go and suppose to match. I already know the person I'm going to match. Me like this, I was just eating rice from two flasks. Brothers, you know what I'm talking about? There you go. Two flasks, just the governor saying that. Which is concerned, I feel you go over I just eat rice. It's in my own. They come right sometimes they will try to and say to me, I'm not here, no problem. Because I was thinking with a friend. Went to meet the big And she finally said, But I'm not even going to buy me. Yes, <laughs> they do. I said, no, you know, as Christians, we have to find the will of And I'm great. God has not said, me and you will marry this guy. Say, me and I and I'm sure. I thought it was you. So, our NYC was finished. And I told myself, once I go and look on the NYC, I will do what? On the NYC. The last day of NYC. This is that corner of me. Say, even if you are not going to buy me, I want to buy the baby for you. Yeah. 
Is he is that one? Yes. My body would shake. If I tell you how I say that, I should tell you. And I would tell her, I said, I said, you is not an accent, I'm serious. She was wounding my heart. So I said, it's okay, I have heart. Let me ease myself. So I entered the toilet. I'm going to be with you the toilet. That's how I escaped that function. And you know, Satan knows how to do that kind of thing. If I had accepted, but I've had a bit out of the earth, waiting for me. You are not listening to me. The odds that are stacked against your future, they are high. It is not everybody you call a friend that is a friend. Joseph's father thought he was sending him to his brethren. But when they saw him coming, what did they say? He said, That's the dream of God. We will keep him. And we will see what will become of his dreams. Can I tell you? It's not every colleague that is excited that you have, you have your GP is in two months. I don't know how you calculate your own GP here. Yeah. It's not everybody that's excited that you pass all your papers. You are a distinction uh, student. What do they say? Ah, the more you try, you don't snag everything. And they are smiling. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry for you. Some of the people who have damaged people's future, they are people they thought were friends, but they were enemies. I remember the story of a, a young man that eventually gave his life to Christ. In older age, he gave his life to Christ when he was already in his forties, going to beat. And he was telling me his story. His father started a business. He joined his father in the only business. After some time, he, he, but the father was doing the business, the son was doing it. And the son's business was growing bigger and was, he was already overtaking his father. It was his father that introduced him to drugs. And the simple reason is to scatter this. It is because his head was correct. That's why his business is already counted. I said, I said, your father, I said, it's my father that introduced me to drugs. I said, does he do drugs? He said, no, he doesn't do drugs. But he introduced it to his son. There are people who can see your rising star. They can see your future. They know that if we leave you and God together, your future is great. Your future is wonderful. There are things lined up of your head. Every time the devil sees a star, leave heaven and cross the skies to come to the earth. He dispatches his demons to go and find out. Even for Jesus, do you remember? They saw the star. Can you imagine from day old, Satan wanted to kill that boy? How he escaped? Don't you have a 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 before he finally go to the cross? If he had died, then he used to escape before getting to the cross. His mission in life has changed. Me and you will have still been sinners. Are you following what I'm talking about? You have dreams. There is a wonderful future ahead of you. But the people you call your brethren, the people you call friends, they are not as friendly. Now, that doesn't mean that you, you cannot say, hey, so Juliet, I think what's going on That's not that. I don't want you to become paranoid. And then you start looking at everybody. Excuse me, do they write it on people's faces? Like, you think you will never find that. For Joseph, they took that boy. They decided they were going to kill him. But thank God, because the boy was a, a, a very sophisticated boy, he was a holy boy, 
He was walking out like God. He did not like evil thing. It is my considered opinion that it is probably Joseph that went to the false Brother Ruben. Do you remember Brother Ruben? Remember what Brother Ruben did? And how he did on a corner at 11 that he was walking near the tent of uh, his stepmother, who was about the same age with him. You said, Jacob. Would they marry the same age with your son? Marry first sister, marry second sister, marry first house girl, marry second house girl. Whereas there was a Muslim that grew up in the same house with seven sisters. How many did he marry? Only one. But that gave up entered one family, marry senior sister, marry junior sister, marry house girl, marry second house girl. With the son, not one That's how Ruben used back. He was looking at people, and Jacob was not there. Joseph saw him say, Oh, but I'm going to be there. 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 I'm going to be and that's how he used back to enter into the world. The tent of his stepmother. And something happened. Joseph sat there and was waiting for him to come out. When the girl said, I saw the brother, I will tell that. He was a holy boy. He was a boy. You see, you don't get this kind of things by a useless life. It is not that are close to God, who are seeking God, who are walking with God, they are the ones that God opens their eyes to see the future, as he saw the future. See, Joseph saw God. Finally, my time, because I said I was going to talk about the death, let me know who to be constant. My time has finished. Can I take some five more minutes? Ten minutes. 15, 20. I was only back in the house. The vision of the future of this young man was what made him to escape these troubles because he was walking close to God. Let me quickly talk about it together. I'm sure you can suspect the girl I want to talk about. Her name is called Gina. Do you remember Tina? Do you know her? What, who was Tina? The only girl among how many brothers? Eh? Twelve brothers. She was the only girl in the house. Let's read that story quickly. Genesis chapter 13. Four. Genesis 34. Very quickly, we don't have all the time to study Gina. Gina is a very interesting story. And Gina, the daughter of Leah, which she bear unto Jacob, went down to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamon, the Hebat, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And his soul claimed unto Dina, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel. And spake kindly unto the dancer. And Shechem spake unto his father, and was saying, Get me this dancer to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dina and his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they were caught. Now you see, when you rewrite stories like this, if you don't read them and think and imagine, that's what we call meditate. If you don't meditate, you don't know why it will allow. Because the Bible said, Dina just decided to go and see the doctors of the land. Is there anything bad in that? But I want you to know the context. There is a lone only girl among 12 brothers. How do you think she would have been feeling? Eh? 
How do you teach in that routine? You photographers, they will, they will not, they are not listening to me again. You see, photograph their picture. Thank you very much. Are you back? Thank you very much. One day, she must have been living in a world of 12 brothers. Every time she wants to go, they say, Where are you going? They say, I want to go and buy bread. And they say, eh, Zebulon and eh, Nathalie, come and follow your sister. You know what I'm talking about? They say, eh, Okay, what I have finished, I want to go and buy your water. They say, No, no way. So I imagine all the time Dina must have been sitting on the bathroom, seeing the daughters of the land passing up and down and wishing she can join them. But one day, everybody see one day. Anyway, one day, many destinies are wrong. How many days? One day. One day happened. All the brothers went to farm. And it was only dinner at home. I don't know what happened that day. If you read my story, I try to paint the picture. If you read the book, Steps to Becoming Prodigal. I told the story of Dina here. I imagine that one day the Baba was sick. And there was a meeting the father was supposed to attend. He cannot go. So he sent the mother to go and attend on his behalf. So suddenly she was the only one there that was to take care of daddy. And then daddy went into this room and slept and was snoring. So Gina told herself, my only chance of going to see, who was he going to see? Her enemies? Eh? You are not asking me. Did she plan to go and meet somebody who will defile her? No, she wanted to go and see her. You see, the problem. That I want you to become aware of is that your life is in battle. You cannot afford to live your life like a civilian because you're on the battlefront. You cannot just catch on anything you like. You whatever you like. As I'm closing, let me read this picture. Let me read the Bible passage for you in the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. If somebody has the message translation, Please stand and read for me with a loud voice. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 9. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 9. Where are you? Yes. You who are young. Make the most of your youth. Eh? Oh, you know, relish. Give me a simple name for relish. Enjoy. Eh? Relish. Enjoy the useful people. Yes? Follow the impulses of your heart. Follow the impulses of your heart. If something looks good to you. If something looks good to you, do what? Pursue it. Pursue it. Also. Hello? I did hear you. But no also. No also. Not just anything good. Not just anything goes. You have to answer to God for every last minute. I'm going to that. See the way they describe the young man. Young man. Are you describing the young man to me? Full of energy. Full of vigor. Full of feelings. Able to take any adventure. You are capable of doing anything. Something makes you afraid. He is a good man. Don't not say it. Let's look at it three times. The last time I tried to do this one, that's why I'm going to fall down. Let's check it very well. Don't make you check very well. They jump. 
He said, release your youthful vigor. What's your vigor? Energy. Strength. Adventurous spirit. Capacity to face things. Capacity to plunge into anything you like. You see me say, yes, I'm a top talent. That's a young man. Release your youthful vigor. Then he says, follow the impulses of your heart. What is the meaning of impulse? You are very really cast against that. You don't even know what impulse is. What is who is willing to attempt? What are impulses? See how all of you are looking at me. I'm going to call you left to ask you come and look at you now. Let's get to the dictionary. Can I read the dictionary in any form? Eh? Who is it? I thought you were the one talking. A force. A force building an object or something at the time. Good, that's a technical, medical dictionary meaning. Who wants to give me a simple image that uh, uneducated people like me can understand? Yes. Uh, a sudden drive. Uh, a dictate of your mind. Let me read my own definition. It says the influence of a particular feeling or a mental state on you that affects your course of action. A sudden involuntary inclination prompting to an action. And it was that thing you just suddenly feel inside your head and it makes you want to do something. That's an impulse. Impulses are tied to feelings. They are things that rumble inside of your mind, out of sight. Silent. And that Bible says, follow every impulse of your heart. Let me ask you, is that a correct advice to follow? Eh? Now, there's something in language they call I don't know, I have forgotten what we call it in English now, but I know it in Yoga. We call it a daoro. What is a daoro in English? When you say the exact opposite of what you really mean, I am it. It's not really a daoro. Okay, I've forgotten my, my lexis and structure now. Literature is not far when I grew up. Are you follow what I'm saying? He said, hey, young man, enjoy every energy that is inside of you. Practice your victory. Follow every inclination of your heart. But not everything goes. One day, you are going to face the implication of your impulses, the implication of your actions, the implications of your choices. Can you listen to me? There are impulses in the heart of every young man. Every time, things are already coming, feelings are around inside of you. And in this day of social media, oh, I'm sorry to inform you, you are no longer free. Everybody is a slave of what you need. You are being controlled. You are being manipulated. People are fashioning your, 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 your thoughts. Every time I look and I start thinking about this concept of celebrities, it's one of the most wicked things they have done to your generation. Which is a celebrity? It's a left. Somebody that looks like he has succeeded in life. Then they come on social media. They flaunt their wealth. They flaunt their life. When they get pregnant, they take photographs of their stomach naked and show you. 
and you be on your It's not what you don't know. Is that they are already they are fashioning your life. They are building your dreams. They are already telling you what to long after. Boss. It's not that you are not there. The same people that are going on a uh, holiday, they spend thousands of hundred dollars. They will report to you the thousands of dollars they spent. They went on the yacht. They went on this. They went on that one. They came back like this. Two or three years later, they break up. Do you not tell me? Don't you know that this life that they are flaunting and flaunting in front of you is not really a lie? But you see, unfortunately, they are forming your thoughts. If I look at some of your figures now, you are going to remove the natural one that God gave you, and you are going to look at artificial needs like that of the cross of the title. I'm wondering why. I know why. You saw it on social media. They painted it to do as if if you give your own happiness like this, you are not going to be anything. If the impulses, they feel your heart to these things, your thoughts, your inclinations are beginning to go. That's what happens. You see, every time I watch how a fashion takes hold on a community, you know, before fashions were limited to communities because there was no social media to spread it. If somebody wave his hair like this, if I tell you something, you will not, you know, maybe some of you will not like it. Some of the hair I see on your hair now, they are the hair they used to be. You know, they don't take very good moves and they want to portray a mad woman. Excuse me, sir. Those in Yanganaga, that's what they prostitute. They say, once you see that one inside the movie, you know that this one is mad. Now, that's what has become fashion. Sometimes you see the hair style of boys. You cut this side, feel a road here, do something like that. That's how they used to portray the vagabonds in the society. In those days, when you see people like you, you just know that this one, one more time, one more time. These are dreams of society. But you see, they have become accepted now because those vagabonds of the society have so pushed it down on your throat. They stole you in every people. You see it on, on social clips, you see it on Facebook, you see it everywhere. And then you accept it. You think that yeah, I saw a billboard one day. Ah. I had to pray for my heart not to throw it to bitterness. Because I thought I said, whoever did this billboard will have sent many people to death. They showed the picture of a young girl that you want for. They didn't show their faces, they just showed their name like this. But what happened to it? And then they put the cash, they said, It's your life. That's a beautiful. And girls, young girls who don't know too much will think they know. They will see that, eh, 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 don't know why they are always wanting to. They are always saying they want to guide you. They don't want you to be free. They are always talking about the, the kingdom of God. They are always talking about who they are. If I don't talk, then you need to talk to you. Yes, sleep your life and bring you back. But know that everything has implications. The battle raging on your life is not small. Let me end by telling you that it is not possible for you to navigate your life as a young man and survive all the mind bombs, all the all the bombs, all the minds. That are on the field of life. You know what I mean by that? All the things that you just place your leg like this and it will explode. They are all over there. They are covered. They are covered with pleasure. They are covered with excitement. They say, let's go have fun. Let's go and do this one. Let's go and do that. that. And you would like to follow them. How will you escape? 
just two minutes. I want to tell you that it's not possible for you as a human being to escape all those minds that are wrong. It's not possible. Are you listening to me? It's not possible. You may either be helped or you will be pushed to actually fall into those things. That's why we have come. All of these arrangements is just to bring me to one point. All the story I've been telling this is to tell you, excuse me, the dangers ahead of your life, they are too much for you to cope with by yourself. I tell you, I have a survivor. I survived. Many of my families did not survive. Many of my friends now are casualties. Casualties of who they married or who they thought they would marry. Casualties of not one outing. Let's not go on a date. And that was the beginning of the end of their life. It's possible that somebody is listening to me. You are already a first level casualty. Something has already begun to go wrong because you didn't know that life is not all about form. Life is not all about following the desires of your heart. You just wanting to be loved, don't want to be like everybody else. Life is more than that. It's not simple that as you are listening to me and saying, hmm, I wish I had this message some two years ago. Every time they love the universities, but I start crying, I start praying, Lord Jesus, this is dangerous. Many innocent girls who should have been in school, studying and preparing for their future. One uncle will spoil their life. One mechanic, one mechanic, rape this one, do this one, that, do that one, do something. Did not be any plan to be raped. She only wanted to go and see. What you don't do is that once you go out to go and see, you have been given the world a chance to see. Because it's the same world. The world that closes you in protects those that are inside. But those who go out is the same world that releases you to the dangers outside. If somebody is to me, you will not be able to survive unless you have God inside you. Everybody likes to follow you are there to do it. There's nothing else to put. It's the impulses of your heart that you put. It's the way you feel that. Now, the problem now is who is directing the impulses of your heart? I bring just one proposal to you tonight. It's the last ritual. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. Please read it. Proverbs 23, 26. You can read it in any translation. For King James, it's a part. Proverbs 23, 26. Who is reading you? My son. My son. Give me thy heart. Give me your heart. And let thy eyes turn my way. And let your eyes turn me. One translation has been, my son, give me your heart. And stand and watch what I've been doing with your life. I come with a proposal this afternoon. I hear God say, there's a battle ahead of your life. It's too much for you. You can't go. I stand here and ask you, give me your heart. Let me direct the impulses of your heart. Let me be the one inside. Let me be the one controlling your feelings. Let me be the one controlling your actions. Let me be the one directing your choices. Because every choice, every action, they have implications, they have answers. And once you step on a particular way, there's nothing anybody can do. We have to watch. I was, I was telling myself, what was God looking at when Gina was being defiled? That's not the correct, correct question. What was Gina doing outside the conference of the sciences? Would you like to bring it to me? 
My soul, give me your heart. Give me your heart today. And watch to see what I will do with your life. I will bring your dreams to come to pass. I will make you reach your destination. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. Give me your heart. And I would like you to respond to that invitation today. While you are there, just say, Lord Jesus, thank you that I'm hearing this. I thank God that I had a message like this when I was 19. I would not have survived. So because I gave God my heart, that's why I'm alive to tell this to I think with people that were on drugs, Satan would have finished my life. I would have been a drug addict. I have a, a very close friend today. We are the same age. My life is scattered. Parents are very rich, but you cannot do anything for them to satisfy. You know, brother, you know, sister, they are running away from him because he's a beggar. No, your life should not turn out like that. No, that should not be the end of your story. And God is saying, give me your heart. What will be your decision today? I want you to talk to God when you are bound down the head and say, Lord Jesus, take my heart. Come into my heart today. Be, be the impulses of my heart. Be the one directing my thoughts and feelings. Oh, I cannot survive alone. But if you come in, this beautiful life that is a battle. I don't want to be a casualty. God doesn't plan you to be a casualty. He wants you to be a victim and not a victim. He didn't plan you to be the conqueror. He wanted you to be the conqueror. But you cannot do it alone. I would like to pray with you. Wherever you are, sitting down, listening to the sound of my voice. Or even if you are listening, on the Facebook or wherever they are streaming this, and something is saying, I'd like to give God my heart. I'd like to revive that experience for you. I cannot forget 40 years ago now when I gave my heart to Jesus. Things change, things turn around for me. I became a new man from inside. He began to guide my life. I'm hoping you the same thing this evening. Would you like to indicate something? Wherever you are, you're sitting now, raise your hand and say, please pray with me. Lord Allah, please pray with me. I want to hand over my heart to Jesus. God bless you. Just raise that hand quietly, wherever you are. Say, please pray with me. I want to hand over my heart to Jesus. There's no need to look around. They are not making the decisions for you. It's the decision that they now has to make for himself. Thank you. Thank you, God bless you. I see those hands. Please keep the hands up. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Raise the hand properly so that thank you. I see another hand. God bless you. God bless you. I see one hand. God bless you. I see another hand. Please don't, don't, don't divide me with it. Don't say I will do it later. No, you will not feel like this later. This is when you will you are, your heart is asking you to make a decision. Respond now. Don't allow yourself to escape this. Only to go and fall in the hands of those you think are friends. God bless you. Raise that hand. Some of our sisters and brothers are putting a piece of paper in your hand. Please raise the hand until you collect that piece of paper. I would like to take your name, your details, so that I can pray with you. I can help you, I can follow you up. It's over 40 something years ago that I gave my life to Christ. He kept me, he will keep me. We've been praying for you. Raise that hand and keep your hands raised until a piece of paper is put in your hands. God bless you. Thank you. I see some two other hands at the back. Thank you. God bless you. Any other person, don't try to be a tough one. Jacob wanted to be a tough guy. He was struggling with God. They wrestled overnight. If God did not win the battle that day, Esau would have finished his life. 
Don't be a tall guy now. Don't say that. Everybody will be thinking that uh, I have become, I have become religious. If you don't become religious, you become to faith. You are not on God's side, you be on the side of the devil. And all you need to do for Satan to finish your life is to make no decision. Thank you, God bless you. You are ready. Raise your hand until a piece of paper is if they have not put a piece of paper in your hand, maybe so that somebody can see and come ahead and put a piece of paper in your hand. God bless you. Thank you. I'll make this final call. I, I, I can perceive somebody, somebody saying, Can I get to my own cell? I'll go and, I'll go and pray. No, it's not the same thing. Jesus said, If you don't publicly accept me, I will also deny you before my father. Everybody who came on God's side, one day they had to make this kind of public decision. And give you just one more chance. Please raise that hand if you have not raised it for thank you. I see another hand. God bless you. Any other more person? Thank you. God bless you. I see one more hand in front here. God bless you. Any more hands? That's it. I finally accept and leave me alone to God. I will not allow you to spoil my life. I am going to Jesus. I'm going to leave me alone. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Any other hands? I see three hands coming up. I'll wait just one more, one more second. If you have been fighting, and God has finally won the battle. Just go up with that hand and say, I, I'm, I'm coming over. I'm not going to allow Satan to win the battle over my life. I cannot wait forever. I cannot wait indefinitely. I need to close for us to pray. One more thing for me. I'm not going to ask you to come out or anything. I just want you to stand up on the feet wherever you are to show that you really made that decision. All of you who collected a piece of paper, don't stand to your feet. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Don't stand. Be bold about it. Those who go to do drugs, they do it for me. Those who are doing all the pornography, they do it for me. They do it for sake and for me. If you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to stand and do it boldly and say, Yes. So this is my decision. Even if it is possible that you have given that decision before, but you knew you yourself, you know that you have come back. I think it's all right. Uh, camera, man, you can solve the camera. This, this no longer concerns anybody outside. Now, thank you, God bless you. Just focus on me. Don't focus on them. Please come to your feet. Now, say, I'm making that decision today. It is possible that you've been a Christian before. But we know that you are no longer right to God. Friends have told you away. Parents think that you are still a good girl, but something has happened. Please go sit down. Stand up. Join this people. Stand to your feet and say, I also want to rededicate my life. I want to come back home. I want to be, I want, I want to come back and be the real child of God that everybody thinks I am. Thank you. God bless you. If you collected a piece of paper, please stand to your feet and make this, this decision, make it real. Make it real. Oh, thank you. I'd like to pray with you. Put your right hand in your heart as we pray together. Just talk to God for one minute and say, Lord Jesus, I hand over my hand. I hand over my life. Don't let shame push which you are going now. Tell Jesus, say, Lord, I have you done that. I, I ask you to deliver me from all that the enemy is planning for my life. Everything that I am involved in now that is not correct, Lord Jesus, come and pull me out by yourself. Come and destroy all the traps that Satan has made for my feet. I come over to you. Father, I pray for these ones that have come. Make a decision for you today, either for the first time or as a rededication of their lives. Nobody comes to you and you reject. Father, this night, 
in a way that they themselves may know come into their heart and flesh. Grant them and encounter this night. Come into their life and situation in a fresh new way. Begin to direct their hearts from today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray with you. I know you see that somebody here, by virtue of this decision, is escaping a mighty fall, a mighty drop into a pit. Father, I plead with you. Even if we see the pit, they will not fall into it in the name of Jesus. Every one of the enemy for this life has scattered it tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing us. This has been Living Sage. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359, 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at or visit our website at www.livingseed.org.